Sometimes I like to spend hours on end thinking about what I would do if I had a never-ending supply of time. But in today's humble opinion, I'll spend a little time talking about endless space, too. Explore, expand, exploit, exterminate. Our powers combined, we're an extremely problematic take on Captain Planet, or a highly addictive genre of complex strategy games that's been putting bread on Sid Meier's table since the dawn of civilization. Get it? Because he... <laughs> He does the Civilization games. Anyway, today we're not talking about Gandhi or his tendency to hoard nukes under the facimile guise of world peace. We're talking about Horatio, an eccentric trillionaire that has given birth to his own galactic civilization by means of cloning himself ad nauseum. His hobby includes the genocide of other species to add their genetic boons into the Horatian slurry for future generations of himself to capitalize on. That's right, space genocide, space eugenics, I'm pretty sure we're talking about space Germany. When it comes to 4X titles, I would normally find it pretty difficult to discuss the differences between each of them, mostly because on the face of it, they're more or less the same. Explore the world, expand your empire, exploit your resources, exterminate the opposition, normally by means of scientific, economic, diplomatic, cultural, or military dominance. As you might have guessed, these sorts of things tend to involve many complicated mechanical systems that are dense to parse for your hobbyist video game reviewer. When it comes to Endless Space 2, however, I found myself pleasantly surprised by how easy they managed to get you up and running. That's not to say that it didn't take me reading through the tutorial a couple of times to fully grasp the information being presented, nor is it meant to imply that I understand all of the game mechanics even now, but they do a good job of laying out their systems and explaining how they work with concise contextual tutorials that show up as you need them, where you need them. They put you in a world, get you going, and then let you do your thing for a while before starting to ease in with the suggestions, if you could even call them that. Subtle guidance that I, as a galactic conqueror, can appreciate without feeling patronized. They don't even judge you for the genetic assimilation thing, it's pretty nice. Even still, Endless Space 2 is a dense game with many deeper workings that I haven't yet uncovered in my limited time with with it. Given that I tend to favor amassing resources and climbing technology trees, I never really got around to learning the complexities of military strategy, which is kind of a shame because one of the things that it does that others don't are space fleet battles and planetary invasions that play out in real time. In addition to, you know, being able to design your own ships rather than simply using whatever stock fodder your race has been granted. Even among the systems that I have come to understand to some degree, I find myself lost. Do I invest in more population, prioritize science, labor, politics? There's so much going on, and each comes at the expense of an Another. Not enough science and you don't have a means to colonize more planets and then you don't have anywhere to put your population which is necessary for more science, labor, and whatnot and with no labor you can't develop planets into anything useful and without enough military you can't defend what you have but that's strange your other resources and it's a lot and Endless Space 2 makes it easy to get lost in. Part of its charm is the fact that it uses the scale of space to introduce interesting races that each feel unique to play. Other games do that too, to some extent, I suppose, but there's something in the character design that really makes it stick here. The Unfallen, a race of tree-like philosophers, conquer the universe by spreading their vines from one universe to another, with the trade-off of losing all of the universes that they've gathered if they're severed from the source. I've already introduced you to the Horatio, then you've got the Riftborn, an abstract race of transdimensional creatures that lived in the very essence of time, the scientifically enamored Sophons, the Cravers, there's just a unique style of storytelling about it, one that you wouldn't expect from a 4X game in general, but one that the Endless franchise always manages to pull off. Endless Legends was similarly intriguing, though it took place in a fantasy environment rather than in space. These guys are a master at their craft, both creative in their presentations and intelligent in their game design. Yet another masterfully executed concept from Amplitude Studios. While I don't spend much time with the genre, and you expert 4Xers out there are going to have to take this with a grain of salt, I'd say that Endless Space has earned itself a lofty 9 out of 10 in terms of sheer approachability. These games are intimidating to approach and they have so many working pieces that it's easier to walk away from than it is to pick them up in the first place. Even though I presume this game doesn't lack any of those intimidating moving pieces and probably even has a few of its own homebrewed into it under the hood, it presents itself in a way that's either tactically expressed in a tutorial or provides enough information that you can kind of glean what it is you're supposed to be doing with a little fiddling around. A friend of mine was spectating as I played and he was just as apprehensive as I was while we were starting out, but by the end of it, we'd taken our collective first step towards understanding. We were having a good time, and what we did accomplish was rewarding to look back on. I'd never won any of the scenarios that I'd played, but I did push my comfort zones, experimented a little bit, and learned a bit more about the game with each passing turn. It's truly a fantastic experience. Thank you everyone for watching, and special thanks to Amplitude Studios for pushing a few boundaries of their own with each passing game. I'm a fan of what you've accomplished, and you always ensure that the endless universe never feels stale. This game is no exception. Brilliant design all around. Until next time, you can catch me over at twitch.tv slash Jonathan is bad at gaming.
games where I'll be recording all of my experiences with these games live. I've got some channel point redemption set up so you can have some input in the direction of the reviews. That's also how I'll be determining giveaways from here on out, so be sure to drop on by and we'll have some fun. Remember that failure isn't the worst case scenario to go on with your bad selves and stay awesome.